Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the mind-blowing video series of tips, tricks, and hacks and strategies for your income taxes. My name is Tyrone Gregory, the peoplepreneur and founder of the ActionFromSquareOne.com website, and I want to welcome you back to video number five, the fifth and final video in this series. And no worries, this one is where all the fun happens, because we are going to do nothing but case studies. Now, in the beginning of the video series, I stated that there were a few considerations that you need to consider in order to arrive at taxable income and ultimately your tax liability. And I remember those considerations were your age, your marital status, uh, if you had children or not, if you rent or owned at your home, if you were dependent and things of that nature. Well, in these case studies, I've developed five to kind of go through those considerations so you can see exactly what I mean when I say you have to consider those things first in order to arrive at your taxable income. But do keep in mind, let me just state this. These are case studies. They are fictional. I made them up. I pulled them out of my head. Any likeness to any names was just coincidental. Also, I skipped a lot of steps. I really want to just show you exactly how to arrive at taxable income. There were a few calculations that were done in the background that you're not going to see. Therefore, I highly encourage you, if your tax situation is not as simple as these case studies may seem, then seek out your tax professional. Go find a tax professional. Seek out an expert to allow them to help you arrive at these numbers again, because I skipped a lot of steps. I've already done the math on them. I've already done a lot of the work prehand just to save time. But even still, it's going to be fun to see how these things work. So let's go ahead and get to the case studies and you will see exactly what I'm talking about. And the first one uh, in scenario one, here we have a Mr. Keon Knight. Mr. Knight is single. He has one dependent. He rents and he gets paid bi-weekly. And so obviously, by the end of this, our goal is to arrive at Mr. Keon's formula. What is it going to take for him to arrive at that perfect tax return? So let me go ahead and pull up Keon's return right now. And here we are. And you'll see uh, what I did first. I went on ahead and downloaded, and I'll suggest that you do the same. Went on ahead and downloaded a copy of a 1040 right off the irs.gov website. They're fillable, so you can just type in on your computer, play around with everything, and you'll see. Um, again, this part up here is really not important. I just put the name in there so you'll know the case study in which we're dealing with. What I want to bring your attention to is here, the filing status. Note in the scenario said that he was single. However, he does have a qualifying child. Not every child is a qualifying child. That's the main difference. But for this purposes, he does have a qualifying child, and therefore he's allowed to claim the filing status head of household. So that box is checked. Uh, which is important if whenever you're doing the case studies, try to match your filing status as close as possible, as close as what you know how. So filing status, head of household. Also, pay attention to the exemptions. Very important. You get one for yourself. And if you're married, you get one for your spouse. And then also you get one for every dependent listed on your tax return. So the exemption, he has one for himself. So box 6A is checked. And I'll put a one there. He has his daughter, Mrs. Princess Knight. So he gets an exemption for her. Put one there. We total those two up and we put it here on box 6D. Now, keep box 6D in mind. We're going to see where that comes to play on page two of the 1040. So in Keon, he makes, uh, well, what is it? Keon makes 60000 a year. He has nothing else, no taxable income, no other income. As we can see here on the 1040, Keon just makes 60000 a year. So when I'm playing around with this and when you're playing around doing the same thing, just simply write in the information. It doesn't have to be exact. 
So I'm going to carry this information down because he has nothing else. So 60000 is his total income. He has no adjustments to go into the adjustment income. And also, let me make this note, adjustments are subtractions. They are things that you are going to subtract from income. Like I said, there's a lot of considerations. There are. But for purposes of this case study, there is no adjustments, nothing to subtract. So therefore, his total adjusted gross income is going to be 60000 And you'll see I put that there. Coming over here to page two of the 1040, line 38 is going to be 60000 And the only reason it carries over from line 37 is because obviously the first page is going to disappear so you'll know where you are. So there should not ever be a difference between line 37 and line 38. If there is a difference between line 37 and line 38, you have messed up somehow, some way, and you live in a twilight zone. So moving on. The standard deduction. I'm going to give this explanation here on this case study, um, as we'll see a lot of difference when we move on to, to the other case studies. Line 40, you have an option. Either itemize your deductions or take a standard deduction. To itemize your deductions means you're going to add up everything that you spent over the year and hopefully is going to give you more than the standard deduction. The standard deduction is an amount that the government gives you just because, just as a general deduction based on the cost of living. It goes up with inflation, or should I say it adjusts with inflation, so it changes every year. So here, if you don't know what your standard deduction is, you can look over to this box here, and you'll notice it gives you a simple uh, instruction. If you are a dependent, there's something different you have to do. If you are single, your standard deduction is 6300 If you are married filing joint, your standard deduction is 12600 And if you're head of household, your standard deduction is 9250 So remember, on the first page, we indicated that because he has a qualifying child, his he uh, gets to claim head of household. So we are going to put that amount here, the 9250 as his standard deduction. Line 41 says subtract. Very simple math. So when we subtract um, the 9250 from the 6000 we get 50750 Notice, we are reducing income. Remember I said, not every dollar that you make is taxable. And this is why I say that, because we are reducing the income. So exemptions, we are going to multiply 4,000 by the, um, the, the uh, number on line 6D. Remember 6D was two, because as you get one exemption for every person listed on the tax return. So it was him and his daughter, which is two. So therefore we're going to multiply two by 4,000 and we're going to get $8,000, right? All right, so here we are, taxable income. After everything is said and done, we are now arriving at the number in which we need. Line 43. And when we do the math, when we subtract it, line 43 is going to be 42,750. That is his taxable income. It went from 60,000 down to 42,750. So that's why I say you need to keep those considerations in mind is because not every dime that you earn is taxable. Again, Income, or should I say his taxable income, was reduced from 60000 down to 42750 okay? And so based on 42750 his tax liability is 5759 That's his tax. And also note, I, I, I failed to mention this in the beginning, I am going to use, for purposes of these case studies, the look up method. I'm not going to use the tax bracket method. I'm going to the tax tables and I am looking up the tax amount based on filing status and income using the lookup method. Okay, so 
there is nothing else. I'm just going to come here, bring down um, his total tax again, 5759 Now, another consideration. Remember, I said things depend. If you have children, he has a child, a qualifying child. And because his child is qualifying for what we call the child tax credit, he gets to also put or get a credit of $1,000. So I am going to put that here. On line 52, total credits, I'm going to bring it over here to line 55. But note what it does. It says subtract this amount from this amount. So when I do so, line 56 is now going to become just simply what uh, 4759. Very simple math here. So notice his tax got reduced by $1,000. So we are going to now bring that amount down to $47.59 down here to line 63. 47, oops, 47.59. And that is his total tax. That is the amount we are now going to use to put into his formula. So when we come back here, the Keon's formula, we now have the tax, so we can look and see that the formula is going to be this. He is going to, remember, he is getting uh, paid on a bi-weekly schedule. Therefore, he gets paid 26 times a year. So he's going to take his tax liability of 4759 divided by 26. And that means he is going to have withheld $183.03 per paycheck. Beautiful. Very easy. You see that? All right. Let's move on to scenario number two. And here we have John and Ann Frugleton. They are married, have two children, own their home, and they both are paid semi-monthly. Again, so this is the scenario for John and Ann Frugleton. And again, our goal is to find their formula to go ahead and, um, I'm going to say find that formula and go ahead and figure out exactly how much they need to pay in taxes. So let me pull up their 1040. And here we are. Everything again pre filled out, the filing status is married filing jointly. They get an exemption for the self, the spouse, and they have two dependents, Joanne Frugleton and Jeremiah Frugleton. Uh, so here we have two and two, which gives us four. Again, we're going to see how that amount plays out on the second page. Well, combined, they make $130,000 a year for both their incomes. There is no other... Uh, income that they're earning. So therefore, line 22, which is going to bring that amount down, 130000 Okay. Again, we look at uh, adjustments and see if we have any subtractions. Well, on them, they do. They're the frugal tens. They like to be frugal. And so therefore, they want to keep as much money as they possibly can and invest. So what they did was put some money into an IRA. They invested over, oh, I say not over. They invested $5,000 into an IRA, which is going to come over here to line 36. But now we know that anything that goes here is subtracted from income. So I am going to subtract the 5,000 from the 130, which is going to give me obviously 125. Again, line 37 and 38 should be the same exact. 125,000. Now, remember, they own their home. The standard deduction for married filing joint is 12,600. But because they own their home, they were able to itemize their deductions, which brings line 40 to be 25,286. Now, of course, 25000 is way higher than 12006 so we want to take the itemized deductions. And when we do the math, line 41 is going to be 
99714 because we're going to subtract that. Exemptions. Remember, line 6D was 4. So we're 4 times 4 is going to give us 16,000. We're going to subtract that from the 99714, which is going to give us our total taxable income. Look at that. Their income went from 130 to only being taxed at 83714. That's beautiful, right? So let's see what the tax is. So line 44 is going to be 12,519. That is their total tax liability. But remember, they have dependents. So on line 52 is going to be 1,250. Now, let me pause right there for a second, because I know some of you are like, well, isn't it $1,000 per qualifying child? Yes, that is true. If you have qualifying children uh, that qualify for the credit, it is, as of this recording, $1,000 per qualified child. However, they made over $130,000, and this credit phases out depending on how much you made. So they didn't qualify for the full $2,000. They only got $1,250. So again, another consideration, depending on your income, some credits may phase out, or you may not qualify for certain credits at all. So keep that in mind. So their total credits came up to $1,250. Now, we're going to subtract that, and line 56 is going to be 11269 which is their total tax. Notice tax went from 12519 to 11269 I love it. We're just reducing it all around. So that's going to bring us to line 63, which is our total tax that we're going to use and plug into the formula. It's going to be 11000 269. That's our total tax. And when we come back here, uh, real quick, as you see, I'm not going any further because right now we're just trying to estimate how much we need to have with hell. So when we file our taxes, we'll arrive at that perfect zero in this area here. So let's go back. Let me go ahead and minimize this. So now we know John's and Ann's formula. Now, because they're married, and they decide, well, we, we have their total tax liability and they both get paid semi-monthly, which means they get paid 24 times a year. So because they want to divide it down the middle, this is how it's going to look pretty much for John and Ann. They can take the 1169 divided by 24 and you can see how they each can have 469.54 withheld from their checks. Okay. Now, again, they decided as a couple, they're going to split the 1169. They see how many payments this is going to be. And so they can take that and, and, and kind of play around with it and see exactly, well, how much do you want to withhold from your check and how much do I want to withhold from my check? But they have their formula. Beautiful. Let's move on. Scenario number three. Here we have Mr. Christopher Noble. He is single. He's retired. He owns his home, however, is paid off. And because he's not a W-2, he doesn't have a with for, uh, uh, any payment schedule or anything like that. In order for him to pay his taxes or to get that perfect return, he's going to use the quarterly estimated payments. So let's go ahead and see what we can do to find Mr. Christopher Noble's formula. And here is Christopher Noble. Again, his filing status is single. He gets an exemption. He only gets one for himself. So we see a one here. And by 6D is one. Okay. So let's see. here. Now he's single. He doesn't get wages anymore. He doesn't get paid in that manner. So he gets retirement. And most retirement comes from pensions or IRA distribution. So we're going to put his income here on line 16 because he gets paid $75,000 a year from his retirement. Okay. He gets no other income 
So line 22 is going to be the same to 75,000. He has no adjustments to his income. Nothing, uh, nothing there yet, no adjustments. So we're going to bring a zero here for adjustments. And line 37 is going to be the 75,000. Again, bring this number down here to line 38, just so we can keep track. Now, Mr. Noble is retired. So let's assume that he is over 65. Let's assume that he was born before January 2nd, 1951. And note it says here, this is where the age consideration comes into play. Check if you were born before this date. Well, he was. He was born before uh, 1951. I do believe he was born in 45. So he's about 70 years old. Now, what this does, and we could put one here. This is why age is a consideration, because depending on your, your age, and, and uh, you will get an increase to your standard deduction. I repeat, depending on your age and also depending on if you are considered blind or not, you will get an increase to your standard deduction of 1250. So for somebody who's single, their standard deduction is 6300. We're going to add an additional 1250 to that because they fell within this range. So his standard deduction is going to be 7850. So let me put that here. It's not 6,300, even though he's single, but this is what changes things a little bit. I'll say age is, that's why I state age is also a consideration. So when we do the math, line 41 is going to be 67, 150. He gets one exemption for himself. One time 4,000 is going to be 4,000. So now we get to arrive at his total taxable income, line 43, of 63,150. Notice, see, we reduced income from 75,000 to 63,150. And based on that, his total tax liability is 11,588. And that's his total tax. So, of course, we're going to bring that down here to line 47 because it simply asks us to add. So 11,588. No credits. He doesn't have any children. He, he's not taking any credits, anything like that. So this is going to be zero credits. And again, total tax is 11,588. So that's going to be line 56. And of course, nothing else here. Line 63. 11588 We now have arrived at the total tax. This is the amount that Christopher can use to go ahead and figure out his formula. So let's minimize Christopher and let's take a look at his formula. So based on that, Christopher is going to take the 11588 divided by four, which is the number of quarterly estimated payments he's going to need to make, and we can see that he will need to have four equal payments of $2,897 that he's going to send in once every three months. Okay? I hope you guys are kind of seeing what I'm saying when I'm talking about taking those considerations. As we can see, it changes things drastically. And of course, every situation is going to be different take into consideration everything that you have going on before you uh, get to plan with the numbers. So, all right, moving on. Scenario number four. Here we have Mario and Maria Ortiz. They are a married couple. They have no children as of yet. They are renting their home. And here is the doozy. They have a mixed payment schedule. I do believe one is on a monthly, uh, gets paid monthly, and the other one is self-employed. So therefore, they're going to be quarterly estimated payments. So it's going to be interesting to find a formula that works for this particular scenario because you have one W-2 and then you have one Schedule C. So let me pull up their information. And here they are, Mario and Maria. 
Again, same with the filing status. They're married, filing joint. They get an exemptions, one for Mario, one for Maria, which is going to give us a line, uh, I mean, uh, an amount of two on line 6D. So, Mario is the one who has a regular job, just works there. He makes $40,000 a year. Going to put that there. And Maria is the one who is self-employed. She has her own business. And we've already determined what her net income is, and that's going to go here on the business income line. She earned a total of $55,000 being self-employed. So when we combine their incomes, the $40,000 plus the $55,000, we're going to get total income of $95,000, Okay. So this is how this is going to work. Remember, one's W-2, one's self-employed. Now, we've already done the, the math on the self-employment, and we've determined that the deductible part, remember I showed you in the video number four, I do believe, we talk about the self-employed individuals. They get to deduct half of the self-employment taxes that they pay. So we've done that math and determined that the deductible portion is 3000 $886. Bring that down here. Okay. So now we're going to subtract that $3,886 from the 95 that they that they made, which is going to give us a grand total of $91,114 on line 37, which is their adjusted gross income. And of course, we're going to bring that number here, $91,000. 114. And now we have our starting point. So remember, they are they do not own their home, so they're not itemizing. So they're going to accept the standard deduction because it's the highest. So we're going to put the 12,600 there. Going to subtract it. So line 41 is going to be 78, 514. They get Two exemptions, one for each of them. So line 42 is going to be 8,000. And then when you subtract the 8,000 from the 78,514, you should get easy math here, 7,514. Okay. Now, based on now, income went from, what was it, 95,000 down to 70,514. That's our taxable income. That's the amount we're going to figure the tax on. Simply go to the tax tables. I'm going to look it up. Okay, income is between this amount and that amount. They are married, filing joint, and it determines that my tax is 9656 based on the lookup tables there. Okay, so it brings us again my total tax, 9656 they have no dependents, nah, nothing going on where they don't qualify for any credits. So total credits are going to be zero, which means total tax is 9656 But remember, Maria is self-employed. So therefore, she has self-employment tax. This is that uh, notice also with self-employment tax, even though you reduce your regular tax, or you can possibly reduce your regular tax. Self-employment tax is added in after regular tax has already been reduced. So here on line 57 is where we're going to put the self-employment tax of 7,771. And now we're going to add these two amounts together to give us our total tax on line 63 of 17,427. Now we have the amount that we want to put into our formula, 17,427. Now, this is going to be interesting to put into the formula because remember, they, they both have different types of uh, payment schedules. One is paid on a monthly basis. The other one is paid using or going to have to use the quarterly estimated payments. So let's take a look at their formula. As a couple, 
they decide, well, you know, let's just split it down the middle. Of course, if you know anybody, you can use percentages. Well, I'll pay 60 percent. You do 40 percent or you could do a 70, 30, 80, 20, doesn't matter. But they decided to split it right down the middle. So their total tax liability of 17,427 divided by eight. I'm sorry, divided by two is going to give them a total each. And what they're responsible for each is $8,713.50. So that's what they decided. I'm responsible for $8,713.50 and you're responsible for $8,713.50. So based on that, they did this. Mario took his amount that he's responsible for. Remember, he's paid monthly, so he gets paid 12 times a year. Divides that by 12. So he's responsible to pay $726.13 for each of his paychecks. And Maria, because she does quarterly estimated, she takes her amount that she's responsible for, divides it by four, which gives her a total amount for each quarter to pay is $2,178.75. So, Beautiful. You can see that there's multiple considerations and either way you do it, you can arrive at it. Just type in the formula. It's as very simple as you can see, and you will be on your way to uh, filing that perfect tax return. Loving it. All right. Let's take a look at our fifth and final scenario. Here we have Mr. Elton Youth. He's single. He's a dependent, meaning that someone else can claim him. He uh, he doesn't own his home. He pays, well, he lives at home with his parents, so his rent is free, and he still has a job in which he is paid bi-weekly. So even still for Elton, we can develop a formula for somebody who is a dependent because they still have to file and pay tax depending on their income. So let's look at Elton's situation here. So here's Elton Youth again. He's single is his filing status. But notice in the exemption section, nothing is checked. There's nothing here on box 6A or 6D. Why? Because as a dependent, when somebody else claims you, you do not get to claim your own exemption. That's why I say it depends for those who are dependents. So let's take a look and see what happens here for Mr. Elton Youth. Of course, he he's uh, let's just say he's he's a full time student. Let's say he's uh, 21 in college doing a good thing. That's why his parents allow him to stay at home rent free. So and he still works. Right. So he makes uh, in a year that he's estimating that he's going to make twenty five thousand dollars for the year. He has no other type of income, no adjustments. So I'm going to just fill this in here. Bring that down again, no adjustments, it's going to be zero. So his total AGI is going to be 25000 Again, bring that amount over here to line 38. He's single. Now, notice when it says for people who uh, can be claimed as a dependency instruction, because depending on how much you make, there's going to be a formula required to help determine your standard deduction. The rule of thumb is if you make more than the standard deduction for single, then you're just going to use the standard deduction for single. However, if you make less than this as a dependent, uh, then you may have to do some math to figure out what your standard deduction is. So because he made over the 6300 we get to use the maximum amount. 6,300. So I'm going to put that there. And again, doing the math, when we subtract that, we're going to reduce it by that amount. That is going to be 18,7. No exemption. Again, line 42 is going to be blank because he cannot claim his own exemption. That is the only difference when it comes to a dependent. So line 43, taxable income, is going to be the same, 18,7. And his total tax, based on that, when we looked it up, is going to be $2,348. Bringing that information all the way down. Total tax. He does it. Obviously, 
Uh, he has no credits to qualify for, so his total credits is going to be zero. Total tax, 2000 348. And we really could stop right here uh, because there, again, nothing else he qualifies for. Line 63, his total tax, $2,348. So that is his total tax liability. That is the amount that he's going to be responsible for as a dependent. Had he not been a dependent and he got to claim his own exemption, of course, that amount would have been a little less. So let me go ahead and minimize this here and let's take a look and see exactly how Elton's formula is going to pan out. So there it is. $2,348. Remember, he gets paid bi-weekly, which is 26 times a year. So he's going to divide that by 26 and he, each paycheck he is going to need to have with hell $90.31. That's it. Well, everybody, that concludes this video series. Again, this was the final video in this series, man. And I truly hope that you got something out of it. And I hope that you had as much fun learning as I had teaching. I just ask that you you, you go back over these, play around with it, um, and enjoy. And Yes, homework. What <laughs> did you honestly think that because this was the last video, there would be no homework? Nope. Still have some to do, but this is this is easy. This, this this homework should be fun. I want you to simply do this: just create three scenarios of your own and play around with the numbers and see what results you get. That's all I want you to do. Just create three scenarios of your own. Uh, go to the irs.gov, download a copy of a 1040. Again, it's fillable. Come up with the numbers, kind of guesstimate what you think you're going to be earning. Uh, take a look at your situation. Consider everything that you possibly can and, and play around with it and see what happens. Um, and then leave, leave, leave comments below. I'm, I'm curious to know how everything turns out for you. And again, I am truly grateful that you endured through all five videos. I only ask that if you do nothing else, that you put these lessons into action and that you come out on top when you file your taxes next year. Again, if at any point you get stuck, please feel free to reach out to your tax professional. If you don't have one, find one. If you need to reach out to me. Remember, you can reach me on email. You can send me a tweet. You can go to facebook.com, leave a comment below, um, do anything you need to do to go ahead and reach out to me. And make sure you subscribe to the video channel. Obviously, there are going to be more videos coming out. Uh, I'm, I'm enjoying this. And um, and make sure you tell a friend. Make, I mean, the great thing would be do to tell somebody to help them file a perfect tax return. And that's it for me, guys. Man, again, I had fun. I enjoyed you. And I thank you for enduring this. And I will see you in the next video.